Welcome to tip number nine on how to increase computer security, online safety, and privacy. And today we will be talking about emails. Now, the first thing that you'll want to understand is email is one of the most common ways for hackers to execute an attack. So whether it's just simply hacking or gaining access or even ransomware, email is one of the most common methods to perform those types of attacks. You also need to recognize that you, the user, are the best protection, not your antivirus. Now, don't get me wrong, your antivirus software will help, and it will help a lot. But at the end of the day, if you go and click on an infected email, the possibility of you getting infected is very high, and your antivirus probably, no matter which one you're using, probably will not be able to stop it. So education is key uh, to prevent infections through email. The most common way for uh, hackers to perform an attack via email is through an attachment or a link that is within the email, a link that you would click on. And so if you receive an email with either of those, an attachment or a link or both, uh, you know right away that you'll need to verify the email because that could possibly be an infected email. Now like I mentioned, the, one of the first things that you'll want to do is verify the email or in other words, you need to find out who sent it or where the email came from. If it's an email from a sender you do not know or recognize and it has a link or an attachment in it, you know right away that that is probably a uh, fraudulent or malware infected email and just go ahead and delete it. Don't even open it. Just get rid of it. Um, if it's from someone that you know, well then you know it's safe. You can even just call or verify with them to make sure. Um, a lot of people don't understand that when you receive an email, you can contact the sender and ask them if they sent you something just to verify that they did uh, before you even open it. And so that is a, a, a very uh, common step that you can do to protect yourself. But basically, you need to know who sent the email. If you do not know or cannot verify who it came from, then just go ahead and delete the email. Now, it's also important to recognize that hackers will try to impersonate uh, an email sender or a sender that you commonly receive emails from. Um, they do this in a variety of ways. Uh, one, they will hack someone else's email and then forward an email on to you. Um, another common method is they will try to make the email look legitimate, uh, like it was sent from uh, a company that you uh, usually receive emails from. And so they will try to make the layout the email address, everything look as close as possible um, to the actual uh, email sender to try to trick you into thinking that it's from someone else, uh, someone that you thought you knew who it was from. And so you'll need to, again, in this case, we would recommend that you know if you should be receiving an email from someone. You can always call the sender, ask them if they sent you something. If it's from a company and you usually do not receive emails from them or or not expecting an email from them, then you should probably contact them just to make sure that they were trying to get a hold of you to verify that. Um, but again, we always strongly recommend that you find out who sent the email because that is one of the biggest keys of finding out whether or not the email uh, is legitimate or not. Just find out who sent it. You can contact the sender. If they did not send it, or you can't verify who sent it, then you know that there's a good chance that the attachment or link is infected. Now, we would also strongly recommend that you have two email accounts, the first one being your personal account that you only give to personal contacts, people you personally know. The second you use for everything else. When you sign up for a social media account, when you go to the store and they ask for an email, when you sign up for an account online, uh, you know, everything else. You give out only that second one. Uh, the first one only is given to personal contacts. The reason why is because the more you use your email, uh, the more places you submit it, the more places you use it to create an account, the more places you use to sign up with it, uh, chances are it's more likely to get stolen. And so there's a greater chance of a hacker tr uh, tr gaining access or, or knowing what the email address is and sending you a, a fraudulent email that's infected. So by using two email accounts, the first one you don't give out unless it's someone you personally know, 
The second one is used for everything else, again, for social media, setting up for online accounts, uh, you know, giving it out to stores and everybody else. Uh, that will help greatly protect you by using two email accounts. Now this last part is just a reminder. Uh, we've talked about this before, but again, it's very important. Make sure you're using strong random passwords for your email accounts. Uh, we strongly recommend that you change the password every three months, and we know that most people do not do either of those because it's inconvenient. But if it's inconvenient for you, it's 20 times more inconvenient for a criminal or hacker. So you need to be doing those things. Same thing with two-step verification. Some people don't do this because they find it inconvenient to have to type in something off of their cell phone. Um, it's very, very good for security. And so we strongly recommend that you do all three of these things. Make sure you're storing your password in a password vault. Um, again, it needs to be strong, random. Make sure you change it every three months and use two-step verification.